Move to close the meeting to order on May 2nd at 8.30 for the joint meeting and the select board. Okay. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Woodstock Village Board of Trustees at 8.31 on Thursday, May 2nd, uh, joint meeting with the select board. Um, first item is we wanted to uh, give the thing maybe? What thing? Oh, the agenda. No. Oh, okay. Um, we wanted to start off with um, public comment um, because we, from last night, we made a couple of changes that I'm going to let either Eric or Stephen go over. Stephen will go over them, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to do 10 minutes for public comment um, about uh, two minutes each, and you're going to time. So is there anybody, <laughs> the one person in the room, would you like to make a couple public comment? You could be mine. Yeah. Okay. We can check to see if there's anybody on Zoom. Is there anybody on Zoom? As of right now, no. Sure. Christina Martin, Woodstock. Um, I live in the boonies. And you have an STR? I do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I've been coming to lots of meetings and doing lots of emails and such to everybody. And um, I, I feel as if there have been some good changes that have that will help me and folks like me. So I appreciate the dropping of the fees. And I know that that's not part of the ordinance, I think. The fee structure can change as we, yeah, okay. So I got that right. Um, I think I just want to make sure that our voices are heard once again concerning um, the regulations that are put on us in terms of the kind of hosting we can continue to do for the village, for our state, for all the wonderful um, visitors that come and stay with us here. I think it's really important that we don't micromanage so much that we lose some of the just the basic beauty that we can offer to folks who've never been here before or who love coming. I have a lot of people that come back and stay. They just love it here. And I want to continue to be able to host with an open heart, as I mentioned before, um, and feel proud of this town and not as if we're operating maybe out of fear of what might happen in the future. Thank goodness, we've got to put all these, you know, carefully crafted, thought out, hopefully appropriate restrictions. Um, so that we don't get into trouble down the road. But let's not lose the absolute basic beauty that we have in this town, which started years and years ago, to open our homes to visitors so they can appreciate what. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I do not comment, a public comment, but I just want to thank you. Uh, you've come to every single <laughs> meeting that I'm aware of. Um, you've emailed myself and the board throughout this process. Um, and this is kind of something we want from our residents to come to these meetings, to talk to us, help shape what the select board and trustees end up doing. And you've done that, so I want to thank you. Um, also, as we talked about publicly, this is an ordinance, but we're going to review this as it goes through. So I encourage you to continue to attend meetings, ask questions, attend the planning commission meeting, and kind of really help shape any community we make in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You and others who have shown up have been different. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you have. Sweet. Yes, taken into consideration. Are there any other comments on Zoom that you see? Uh, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay. Um, then uh, next, I'd like to move into just a quick review of the changes that we made last night um, before we go on. Do you want to do that? or? I'm going to ask Stephen Bauer, the plan zoning administrator, to do it. Uh, he I had a planning commission meeting last night after. Um, our meeting and then put together the change the ordinance last night and this morning. So I feel he you know, to present the changes and yeah. we wasted his whole night uh, <laughs> to me, so. It's okay to fall asleep while proofreading, right? 
Um, morning, everyone. Stephen Bauer, Director of Planning and Zoning. Um, just going to share my screen so we can walk through this. Um, I did catch in that proofreading a couple other things, but I'm going to first share my screen um, and discuss. Yeah. Oh, I can see better. Not bring my glasses. The kind of two major things that, that stuck last night. So one, I'll direct you to the definition of owner occupied, which is on page four, starting on line one. So we added in, so we struck the whole definition of owner occupied. Um, again, just to remind everyone for the purpose of clarifying this, um, so we had thought that there was a, there's kind of a discrepancy of whether or not a, a parcel that is zoned uh, owner occupied. So that has now changed to clarify that to say uh, an owner occupied means a parcel, uh, not a parcel and a home uh, that meets the definition of Vermont homestead as determined by the Vermont Department of Taxes. Uh, so that clarifies that. Any questions there? Okay. And then really the next big thing would be the last night the board solidified the uh, fee schedule. And so I'll say we needed to make references, change the references to that. So. Tim has one question before that. Yep. Section five, page five. Um, short term rental officer. Uh, do we currently have a short term rental officer or does the board need appoint one? No, nope, this will be a this will be a brand new appointment. Um, so and I was gonna talk about that on the on the second wave, but we can no, I mean, sorry, it's simple ahead. enough we can talk about it right now. Uh, so we don't have a short term rental officer. Um, so as soon as this is adopted, we need to to have one um, because the ordinance calls for it. So that's why I have Unless and until, so making the default the zoning administrative officer for the town, um, until we go through the process, uh, and if the select board and trustees appoint a, a short term rental officer. Um, so that could end up being the administrative officer, but that just calls out that you need to appoint one because we don't currently have one. Thank you. Um, so then the reference, there's a couple of references to the fees that have been removed. That was specifically, uh, so I'll turn to page nine, line 14. That's here. Uh, that's just removing, um, when we had the, the fees, the fee schedule was in the ordinance. Uh, obviously we have to remove that because section nine is is just points to the adopted fee schedule. Um, so we eliminate that reference. And then there's another reference. There's one on page seven as well. Line 20. Thank you, Eric. Yep, that's the other reference. So page seven, line 20. So those are the major changes from, from last night. And if you have any questions on that. Okay. And just where's the listed uh, unlimited? instead of the CD. Um, so the removal of that would be, well, it's, it's now not listed because we because we don't have a, a cap on it, but where that was removed from would be section. Yes. So now if you look, it's, it's no longer there. So the lack of specificity means that it's unlimited. Correct. So, so we haven't placed any express limit okay. on, on the amount of data. Okay. 
The only other small things as we walk through. Um, so this is just in, in proofreading uh, words that don't don't need to exist under section one, uh, removing collectively, because um, we already say these two boards adopt. So we don't. It's redundant to have uh, collectively. Uh, same as with the administrative in five that you saw before. The section five administration. So where we just were on section B line 18 on page five. So if you go below that, uh, it says one select board and trustee shall appoint short term rental officer. And it says um, that the short term rental officer. So a lesson until the select board, rather than just saying otherwise jointly appointed uh, again, removing the redundancy. Uh, removal, the short term rental officer uh, may be removed for cause at any time by action of the select board and trustees. Uh, that's what we mean by a vote. So, again, redundant. Uh, if there's any other thing that I caught. Other one. On page 12, seven. Yep. Got those specifics because you want to, because we have to just be. Broad about to host parties, conferences, family reunions, weddings. Yep. So the concern there is is just simply the number of of parking spaces that are that are taken up. Um, it has nothing to do with any specific reason for why. Um, so it, it's best just to remove that the specificity for the party conference. That's not that's not the point of the ordinance. The point of the ordinance is is in this so the. Use it it's not the gathering itself. It's it's the accumulation of the of the vehicles uh, beyond uh, the number of guests. And then you'll see, obviously, section nine, uh, how that changed. There was a fee schedule. We decided last night to remove that fee schedule and insert this language that just says the trustees and select board shall shall adopt those fees. Um, separate of this, um, that is all the changes. I have on that. Do you want to review the, the fee schedule now? Yeah, well, uh, just I want to make sure that is everybody, does, do any of the trustees of the select board have any questions about the ordinance separate from the schedule? I do. Okay, and so. Um, so is that correct? Yep. Okay, and Eric, what's the what's the vote? She stays up here and makes a comment. Or? Once she recruits herself, she should step away from the table. Okay. At this point, I don't think she has recused herself yet. So once she okay. officially recruits herself, then she should step away from the conversation <clears throat> and sit down and talk about the public. Okay. I recuse myself. Okay. okay. That is now. We're past public comment, but since you've now recused yourself, I think we can take right. your comment so, yeah. in the audience. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Is, and I'm sorry, trustees, select board, everybody's. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so looking over the ordinance last. What's your name? I, oh, excuse me. My name is Brenda Blakeman. I live in the village of Woodstock, Vermont. Um, you have two SD members. I do. Um, so a few of the things that I noticed last night going over this is, um, number one, I didn't see any reference to hotel inns and bed and breakfast that also advertise on short-term rental uh, platforms. How is that going to work? So, so you know, if I'm incorrect, but this is not for hotels, bed and breakfast is only for Airbnb short-term rentals, correct? But hotels, motels, and inns advertise on short-term rental websites. Right, so yeah, but this regulation is for short-term rentals, which hotels, motels, Bed and breakfast are not. So I guess I'm misunderstanding the question. So I think the question is, a, 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 do you mind if I? The try question to... is, um, so our um, the computer software that we are that we are wanting to put in place um, detects short-term rentals by advertising on their platform. Correct. Okay. So hotels, motels, inns, bed and breakfast, they all advertise on that platform. Mm -hmm. All right, so how are we going to handle that? 
Well, I, I assume logistically, and correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen, they'll be checked against permits, but all motels, bed and breakfast, motels, other types of lodging have an entirely separate permitting process. Okay. So it's like if you're going, like this is a horrible analogy, but you're going out to catch tuna and you catch a dolphin in there, like just because there's a dolphin, then you let the dolphin go and you keep the tuna, right? Yeah. So like it it's going to show them everything, but they are going to parse out only the things that are STRs and check it against register. So hotels, they don't have anything to do with all those other things. But if they're advertising on the platform and that's what this computer software catches, yeah. then they why pull those out. They just go because that this only has to do with STRs. This okay. is about STRs advertising as opposed to anybody advertising. Okay. All right. Um, and the other thing I noticed on page five from the old ordinance, um, section 15, owner occupied can, um, property owners can only have one short term rental within the village and or town. Unless you are a pre existing short-term rental operator okay so that is clear that that's the way that's going to go yes okay is that correct Stephen? yes okay okay Going forward any new permit holder can only yep yep yeah i understand that um uh, okay i think actually that takes care of all of my questions thank you very much thank you miss blake Okay. Um, so, Trustee from Select Board, do you have any questions or is there any discussion on the ordinance, not the fees? I have one question. Sure. Um, page one, uh, section two, line 16. Um, is that, I, I'm not sure, is that just, I mean, it's an ordinance, so does that just mean we're suggesting this or what? It's the intent. The intent. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm done. Trustees, do you have anything? Any other questions? I know you have a quorum. You have three votes. No. Okay. Ready to move on to the, that's the piece. Yeah. Okay. Wanna, oh, look, Greg's here. Okay. Talk to us about these. Okay. So this is much easier. This is the, uh, the simple short term fee schedule that we agreed to last night. Um, it's just the, the one pager says this is a short-term fee schedule. So the language up top um, just makes the reference to section nine where the fees are established that says that connects this fee schedule to the ordinance that says this is this is where it comes from. Um, and then has the short-term rental base annual registration fee for owner occupied 500, uh, for non-owner occupied 1000. Plus we have the maximum occupancy fee one to four maximum occupants is 250. Five to eight is 1,000, and nine plus is 2,000. Trustees, do you have any questions? Or is there any discussion on this? Any select board question? Any discussion? Nope. No, I'm satisfied. Okay, um, so I would make a motion for the trustees to uh, approve the sh ordinance regulate the operation of short term rentals as presented this morning with the uh, draft from today from May 2nd. Um, is there a second? second? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? The motion carries. And I would like motion to accept the ordinance regulate short term rentals. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, let's move on to the short term rental schedule. So I would make a motion for the village trustees to approve the short term rental 
fee schedule as um, presented this morning. Uh, is there a second? Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries four four zero. And I would entertain a motion to accept the short term rental fee schedule. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And just for clarity, those, both those motions and fee schedule are tied to section nine of the short term ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Talk to. Yeah. Okay, and I just want to um make some comments that I want to thank the planning commission for all the hard work in the last year in the ordinance. Um, volunteers that gave up their time for research, discuss, prepare legislation, legislation for the municipality, and thank them all for their efforts and dedication. I also want to thank the planning zoning department for working on this. Planning, the planning commission. Directing both boards, coordinating the process, and acknowledge that even though the, this ordinance will add to their workload, they put all their effort into knowing this is the best interest of the municipality. Um, and I want to thank the select board and the trustees, uh, especially the new people that have come on board and come up to speed so very quickly. Um, it is never easy to get 10 people to work together. Five is very hard, 10 is even harder. Um, so I appreciate all the time that you've put in. Um, outside of normal business hours, um, being elected is a privilege, but it is also really hard sometimes. Um, and I know that we all get lots of different information um, at lots of different times. It's very hard to balance the needs of, in our case, 900 people, in the case of the town, 3,000 people. Um, so I appreciate you all doing the hard work, showing up for votes, listening to people, always listening, listening to people. Um, and being willing to compromise. Um, there's been a lot of emotions in this as well there should be um, and being able to say, okay, I can't get everything I want <laughs> or everything that I think people need and being able to compromise is super hard. Um, and so I appreciate that you all have been willing to, to compromise, to listen, to come up with something that we, we could all agree on. Um, and I know there's gonna be a lot of hard conversations and hard decisions down the road. And I think that this just shows that when we put in the time and the effort, we we can we can do this um, in a respectful way um, and in a thoughtful way. Um, and also I'd like to thank Eric for keeping us on track. Um, I know that sometimes we are not easy to deal with. Um, <laughs> um, so I appreciate that you answer our texts and our calls and our messages. And of course that of uh, the municipality, all of the people who live here and work here. So. Thank you for listening to us, um, for keeping your cool with us, and for keeping us on track. Okay, have one thing. Yeah. And, and I, I thank the public for showing up yeah. and yeah. giving us feedback, both in emails and in person, and it, it helps us do our job better and more representative. Absolutely. Okay. Is there any other business to come before the trustees this morning? Uh, and that case, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn for the select board. So a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. aye. Thank you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm.